While the ultimate goal of science is to advance understanding, and in the case of social research, our aim is to provide an understanding of social processes, the occurrence of social phenomena. However, equally important when, a current, when trying to achieve this goal is that we conduct research in, a, in an appropriate manner that protects people who participate in it and is also truthful. In this lecture, we're going to describe different types of scientific misconduct, provide a, an overview of the ethical treatment of people who participate in social research studies, and give some historical examples of ways in which some of these principles were violated by prior research studies. Ethics provide a set of principles that tell us how to act in moral and responsible ways. They provide a sense of what is right and wrong and what we should do or not do. Research ethics takes these principles and applies them to scientific research. Research ethics involves the application of ethical principles to scientific research. It provides a map for what we should and shouldn't do when we're conducting studies. Scientists are expected to conduct their research with care, that they're truthful in reporting findings, and that they're also open to criticism and new ideas. Misconduct occurs in research when scientists engage in certain activities. These activities related to, science, related to research misconduct include fabrication, where scientists make up data and report them in publications or presentations. They falsify their results. Falsification refers to the mani manipulation of data so that results do not accurately reflect the true findings of the study. And finally, plagiarism is where a researcher appropriates another person's ideas, results, or words without giving them proper credit. One example of data falsification and plagiarism was, were allegations against the prolific cancer researcher Dr. Carlo Croci, who faced allegations of data falsification and under other scientific misconduct carried out within his laboratory at Ohio State University. Um, in, in this case, uh, Dr. Croci was, was found, there were allegations that he had manipulated some of the, the findings in this study, um, and manipulating images of, of, of cells in different experimental conditions, which provided maybe a sense of results that were not tr accurate. So this is a kind of an example of image manipulation that provides an example of data falsification. When people are participating in researcher, and when people participate in research, the researcher has a responsibility um, to engage in eth the ethical treatment of human subjects. There are certain problem areas that can arise um, when we involve people in our research. The first is that we should avoid any harm to um, research participants. So potential harm is something that could occur in research studies. People who participate in research have the right to personal safety, that we should avoid doing any harm to people who participate in our research. Lack of informed consent is another ethical um, violation in the treatment of human subjects. People who participate in research should not be coerced into participating in a study, that they should, they should have a choice. They should be informed about the, the general aims or uh, goals of the research. They should be informed about any uh, risks or benefits that they might um, occur as a, prop, as, as a result of participating in the study. And they should have the ability to make a decision, yes or no, whether they want to participate in that research, and that they should not be penalized for a decision not to participate. Deception is a is another um, violation of ethical principles and deception occurs when researchers um, when research subjects are misled or misinformed about their participation in in a study research researcher uh, research subjects should not be misled or misinformed although deception um, is permitted in certain special cases as a general rule 
researchers should avoid misleading or misinforming people who participate in research studies. Finally, it's the responsibility of the researcher to maintain the privacy of all people who participate in research. Um, the privacy of research subjects should not be invaded. That is, the identities of people who participate in research should be kept confidential. Um, the researcher should not reveal the identities of people who participate in research or connect their um, in information that's collected as part of the study to their names and identity, identi other identifiers. So privacy invasion could be another way in which ethical principles are violated in research. It's helpful to look at some of the historical examples of um, ethical violations in research. One particularly notorious example of an ethical violation was the Stanford Prison Experiment. In 1971, Philip Zimbardo, a Stanford University psychology professor, conducted an experiment in which he randomly assigned a group of male students at the university to roles as either prisoners or guards. And he set up a, a, a simulated prison environment in the basement of the psychology department at Stanford University. These were normal college students, and they, they consented to participate in this research study. However, once they were randomly assigned to their roles as prisoners or guards, the prisoners in the study, this, these students who were participating in this research, were exposed to verbal abuse. And some of the um, participants had adverse psychological and psychosomatic reactions. Uh, to their participation. It was also the case that some of the research participants felt that they could not leave the research study even if they wanted to. And so this, this, vi this um, violated the principles of doing no harm and also making sure that people are aware that they can um, drop out of a research study at any point in time. Although the results of this research were important for advancing our understanding of psychological processes, it came at the expense of psychological harm and ethical um, mistreatment of people who are participating in this study. One example of a violation of informed consent was the sociologist Laud Humphrey. In 1975, uh, Laud Humphrey published a, a, the results of a study he conducted of sexual encounters in public restrooms. This study was called the Tea Room Trade. And in this research, he conducted observation, uh, participant observations, and he, he did not make his research subjects aware that he was conducting this research. Um, and he was, he, he was conducting a study of impersonal sex in public places. So he was watching um, homosexuals um, as they were engaging in social, sexual acts within um, public restrooms. And he, he played the role of a what's called like a watch queen to warm homosexuals uh, of intruders um, into the public restroom as um, they were engaged in sexual acts. So he was playing this role as a watch queen, but he was not making the um, the people he was observing aware that he was conducting research. And so they were not informed about um, his research study, and they, they could not make a decision about whether to participate or not participate. And so this was a violation of the principle of informed consent. More recently, there in 2014, there was a study that was published among researchers at Facebook and Cornell University in, um, in which they revealed the results of an experiment in which Facebook users' news feeds uh, of nearly 700,000 people were manipulated to um, include greater or lesser amounts of positive and negatively worded content. That is, the researchers um, manipulated the uh, Facebook news feeds of, of users so that they showed more positive content or showed more negative content. And they were studying this idea of emotional contagion, that emotional 
um, that emotion can spread from person to person. And they found that when they included more positive content in people's news feeds, that people responded by posting, um, using more um, positively worded uh, phrases in their own postings on the on the social network and likewise when when more negative content was included in the news feeds people responded with more negatively worded postings and so they, they found pretty um, strong results uh, which suggested that emotional contagion does occur that emotion can spread across a social network however one of the issues with this research is that there were questions about whether the participants in the study, the more the 689,000 people who participated in the study were truly informed about their participation. In this case, the researchers used the user agreement that people sign on when they first sign up for Facebook. Um, you're required to um, ag agree to a set of terms and conditions to participate in the social network. The researchers argued that this represented informed consent. And people who were critiquing the study argued that if these, these people were not truly aware that they were participating in this experiment, then they could have been exposed to undue psychological harm. In closing, when make, there, there are certain guidelines that researchers can follow to make sure that they, they engage in ethical decisions in social research. The first thing is when you're, when you're planning a study, you should try to think about all of the potential benefits and costs for research participants. You should think about what are the advantages and disadvantages uh, um, to the people who are participating in this research. Are there any harms? Um, are there any potential benefits? And these should be weighed. The, the benefits generally should outweigh the costs. It can also be helpful for researchers to look through the ethical codes that are developed by different professional societies. For instance, psychologists should review the ethical principles developed by the American Psychological Association. Likewise, sociologists would be advised to review the ethical principles set forth by the American Sociological Association. And perhaps most importantly, researchers should prepare a, an extensive um, and detailed outline of their research um, protocols and submit uh, any protocol which involves people in which information is collected from people by the researcher. These protocols should be submitted to the Institutional Review Board, which are bodies of um, individuals, uh, some of whom are researchers, some of whom are not, and they review all um, research that's conducted by an organization, such as a university, and they, they make determinations about um, whether the research violates any ethical principles, whether the researchers should make any changes to their protocols so that the identities, um, the consent, um, that the research does no harm, that people are informed about their participation, that they're not deceived. Um, so the IRB helps to serve as a, a safeguard against um, any um, potential m uh, mistreatment of human subjects in research studies.